Peter, thanks very much for joining us today. That's the chart of the day, 120. We love our levels. 120, first time since January 2015. Has it overshot? The euro or not? Uh, we think from a short-term perspective it indeed did. For example, we estimate that at this point there is around 3% of premium price into the euro dollar versus its short-term fundamentals. Mm. But, I mean, at this point we see this, I, don't know, I would say sky is the limit for the euro. Yeah. Because if you look at the grand scheme of things, geopolitics, euro is rising in terms of importance above the dollar. It is now the third safe haven in terms of ranking in the G10 space after the yen and the Swiss franc. Also, there's this continuation of that upward euro dollar trends in Jackson Hole. And very importantly, with the ECB QE tapering coming, for any trader, it is very hard to put on a short euro dollar position because you know that the monetary policy normalization is coming. Still, though, you're, you're suggesting the euro is going to stabilize at these levels, aren't you, Peter? At around 120. For, for a few months, and then when we get into the beginning of next year, we begin the grind higher. Yes, that, that's exactly our view. We think that two factors from now on will limit persistent and huge euro dollar upside. One, the fact that the euro is strong will mean dovish form of ECB QE temper, tapering, so limited upside to bond yields. And two, Italian elections likely in the first quarter of the next year. And what we learned, say, ahead of the French elections, that ahead of such an event, bond yields are unlikely to rise. And if they don't, there is lack of fundamental upside to the euro dollar. But once we moved above this point, again, we think that the sky is limit for the euro and we look for the euro to break above 125 in the middle of the next year and even above that thereafter. Yeah, so really something similar to what John Taylor, the FX guru, is saying today. We have a story on the Bloomberg about that. So how do you make money in this environment then? Do you wait to see which way it breaks or do you just put on some, some, uh, some trades just in case? So in terms of the G10 space, we think that this is a great, I mean, now there are great opportunities to put on long structural trades. For example, if your dollar moves below 120 again towards 118, we think a great, it's a great opportunity to put on a fresh long position again. Or even better, we probably think that this higher euro dollar will spill over into all European currencies vis-a-vis -vis the dollar block. So we think that like that currencies like Swedish Corona against the dollar block and against the dollar itself offer great value over the one to two years time horizon. So from that perspective, and given what is happening now, near term, yeah, you may, you may try to chase your dollar higher towards 122. But, I mean, structurally, medium term, one to two years ahead, we think any dips in the euro dollar, great opportunity to put on fresh new longs. Peter, because are there any currencies in the emerging markets that are looking attractive to you? They're selling off a little bit in the last few days. Uh, yes, we do. I mean, in emerging market space, we have a long-held view or we are, I would say, we are in deep love in Central and Eastern European current effects. Czech Corona, Hungarian foreign, and Polish Loti against, against the dollar, again, offers a great value over the medium term. Why? Because this is the only emerging market region which can benefit neatly and directly from the structural change in the euro dollar and higher euro. Because historically, whenever euro dollar goes up, Obviously, it goes up against the dollar, but very importantly, central and Eastern European currencies benefit against the euro itself. Hence, we call it long CFX, short the dollar, we call it euro dollar on steroids. One mm. currency that you could call on steroids, Peter, is uh, euro pound, which today is at 92.98, highest level since 2009. Your third quarter forecast is 90 pence. Clearly, we've gone through it in the third quarter. The euro, I mean, it's quite incredible it's run against all sorts of currencies. Is parity out of the question? We think that for now it is out of the question. And the reason is that I would say I completely agree this fall in, star in sterling in August was stunning. Mm. Because very importantly, that upside in euro sterling wasn't only about the higher euro. Because if you look at it, euro Swiss is flat. Euro dollar is up 1.5%, yet euro sterling is up 3.5%. We estimate that there is around 4 to 5% risk premia 
built into, st into sterling against the euro on a short-term basis. Mm -hmm. And this means that already too much bad news is priced into sterling. And for sterling to really fall towards parity against the euro, you would have to most likely see a cliff edge Brexit. Which is looking unlikely. At this point, we think so. And again, I would say from this perspective, when currencies reach these massive overvaluation limits, say like euro is overvalued against sterling, sterling is undervalued against the euro, it is usually very hard for them to push forward. For example, euro dollar over the last three years was a case in point. It never went towards parity because it was too, too cheap. While at this point, we think sterling is too cheap against the euro. Great stuff. Peter, thanks for joining us. Peter Kapata, the ING Chief EMEA FX and Interest Rate Strategies, Bonnie. Great.